Dream Cruise Roadshow is brought to you by Plymouth Oral and Facial Surgery, Doctors David Sturtz, Norman Betts, Jeffrey Wazalewski, Chad Betts, and Matthew Pinsky, with offices in Plymouth, Ann Arbor, Chelsea, and Ypsilanti. And by Lloyd and Morsine Royce, RF Connect, Leonard A. Kurshevsky, Neil Zelenko, Marjorie and Maxwell Jospi Foundation, Hanan Lease, and Sandy and Jim Danto. And welcome into the corner of Nine Mile and Woodward Avenue in beautiful downtown Ferndale, Michigan. And this is the Dream Cruise Roadshow here on Detroit Public TV and DPTV.org worldwide, uh, including AntiquesRoadshow.org. Uh, Hi, I'm Fred Nahat. Uh, uh, pleased to have you along with us. I'd also like to introduce uh, to you, bring in our automotive expert, uh, also uh, analyst, uh, automotive legend here in this city, uh, Bob Lutz, providing... The color commentary along with uh, our friend Eric Gorgeous uh, from A Craftsman's Legacy, uh, Bob, Eric, and I going through a terrific collection uh, of classic cars here uh, where it all started uh, in downtown Ferndale, Michigan. And uh, Bob, next up, uh, let's take a look at this 1971 Chevrolet Nova from Rick Breckenfeld. Uh, this is an incredible piece of machinery, but also yeah. a little bit of history. Well. Uh, it's actually, it was the, the first couple of generations of Chevy Novas were sort of small and wimpy looking and weren't that successful. And with this redo, the car was made bigger and a lot more muscular and was uh, could be had with very powerful engines and sort of became a, a, a pocket rocket or performance car. Hard as it is to believe when you look at that, that was considered a compact car back then. Yeah. And people would say, why do you want to buy a, a little itty bitty thing like that instead of a full size car? And you know, today when you look at it, it looks totally full size. I always liked this car. I thought it looked muscular. It had a nice thick roof. Um, the whole uh, styling of the car was very substantial looking. Yeah. Uh, this this is a very nice specimen. Well, I want to learn a little bit more about it. Uh, here is the Eric Gorgeous. Uh, in the middle of Nine Mile with Rick Breckefeld, who owns the 71 Chevy Nova. Uh, Eric, to you. Hi, I'm Eric Gorgeous, host of Craftsman's Legacy, and I'm here on Woodward talking to my friend Rick with his Nova. So, Rick, okay. tell me about your Nova. Well, this car belonged to a friend of mine. He had it, uh, he bought it in uh, about 1980, and he passed away in 99, and I, they offered it to me in uh, 2008, and I took it all apart the whole car apart. Really? And then I cleaned everything, painted, rebuilt the trans, the rear end, all the brake lines, gas tank, redid the interior last year. I'm constantly working on it. Every couple of weeks, I'm doing something to it. Yeah, and what's the last thing you did to it? Just working on the interior, a new dashboard, and some of the wiring. Now I gotta work on the radiator. I have to get a better, I have to get a better uh, fence route for it. It's running a little hot. Right on. Hey man, this is a great car, and I'm so glad you came out here with it, because it looks fantastic. And it looks like it's a blast to drive. Oh, it is. It's a little loud now, but it, it sure is a blast. I tell you, they hear me coming and going in my neighborhood. Right on. It, it's, it is a riot to drive. Right on, right. man. And it, being that it, it was my friend's car from almost 30 years ago, I I appreciate the fact that uh, I got to get it and restore it. You notice I got his, his name was Weasel, so I got Weasels on the, on the license plate. Nice, man. In his honor. Nice. All right, buddy. Hey, thank you so much for yeah. coming out. Thanks again. See you soon. Well, that is uh, the 1971 uh, Chevrolet Nova, uh, and back alongside Bob Lutz. Uh, and Bob, we were talking a little bit earlier about uh, the naming of cars, the nomenclature, yeah. what they decided to do. And there's a story behind Nova. Well, it sounded okay in the States because in Italian it means new, uh, or it could mean a, a Nova star, which also means a new star, by the way. But in Spanish, it, if you pronounce it Nova, it means doesn't go. So it wasn't a, it wasn't a name that could be used globally. Well, the marketing guys uh, you know, obviously have their ears tuned uh, uh, to, to, I guess, cultural uh, nuances. Well, coming up now, a 1955 Ford Fairlane Debbie Furtney, uh, beautiful in color, uh, Bobby. Yeah, see this well, one that was, up. that was that's fantastic. I mean, that's authentic authentic 1950s this is when a gentleman wore charcoal gray suits to the office with a pink shirt and uh, this this uh, combination 
of dark charcoal gray or black yeah. with pink uh, was extremely fashionable, both in uh, uh, e- even in in furniture and stuff, and and uh, and of course in clothing. And that car is very nice because it epitomizes the era. It's got a uh, a popular accessory at the time, which was the Continental kit, which people thought would make it look more like a more like a Thunderbird. And uh, the dealers like to sell those because they made a couple of hundred dollars more. Um, but this was also a very successful f- Ford model, which, among other things, had innovations like a clear plastic, clear plastic dome over the instrument panel, so that the ambient light would illuminate the instrument for you. You didn't have to, you know, they weren't buried down in a tunnel. Interesting cars, very successful and a worthy competitor to the 55 Chevy. Well, let's get a closer look. Debbie Furtney, the owner of the 1955 Ford Fairlane. Here's Debbie uh, with Eric. Eric, over to you. Hey, how are you? Hey, I'm good. How are you? I'm well. This is a beautiful car. Thank you so much. How long have you had it? It's our fifth season with it. It's been in the family um, 19 years prior to that, so it's oh, for a while, yeah. That's awesome. Yes. So tell me about it. How long, you said you've, it's been in the family for quite some yes. time. Yes. Ironically enough, my husband's aunt saw it at the Woodward Dream Cruise in 1997, and she approached the guy who had restored it and asked if it was for sale, and the deal was done that day on Woodward Stationery. So oh, how really cool, cool. Is that? Yeah. yeah. And was it in this condition when you found it? Um, well, it's, you know, it was restored in the early 90s, so it's starting to maybe need a little bit of work here and there. But when she bought it, it was like almost, you know, recently restored. Wow. It our... looks great. Thank you. And I love the colors. Thanks, me too. You know, the pink and black just yeah. looks so classic to me. It screams 50s. It's very nostalgic. Yeah. It's yes. just beautiful. What a great car. Thank you, You so got to love driving this. Love it. Yeah. You're going to be out tomorrow or on yes, uh, Saturday? Yes, I'm going to be out tomorrow afternoon, and I'll do the Berkeley Parade in the evening, and then we'll be out on Saturday. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. Have a great time, thank and you thank so you much. again for coming out. Thank you so much. Nice to meet you. Nice meeting you. All right, Fred. All right, Eric, thank you. Yeah, that was the 1955 uh, Ford Fairlane. Bob, as you, uh, as you mentioned, uh, indicative of the fashion of those days. And is fashion something that designers think about? Uh, I, I don't know if the engineers do, yeah, but very the designers. Much so, very much so, um, especially... Now that we have a more diverse design staff with a, a lot of female designers, uh, there's much more of an input from the world of fashion, movies, popular music, and so forth. All influences automotive design. Well, we are uh, uh, coming to you live from the corner of Nine Mile uh, and Woodward. This is a Dream Cruise Roadshow. It's an annual celebration uh, here in the Motor City, sharing it with you live. Uh, uh, worldwide at dptv.org and antiquesroadshow.org. This is a celebration not only of uh, Detroit's industry, uh, but also uh, uh, as the people are industriousness. And part of that is uh, creating these classic uh, automotive uh, experiences, not only on the road for everyone to share, but also the individual owners who just love, love, love uh, their classic cars. Up next, Sally O'Malley in a 1957 Dodge Coronet. Bob, this is... uh, uh, two-tone, uh, well, real what, lively. Th- this is what we talked about. This is what Chrysler came out in, came out with in 1957, and we saw that 58 Chevrolet mm-hmm. earlier, which was much taller, much boxier, had no fins, and uh, Chev- a, a, a Dodge, Plymouth, and Chrysler and DeSoto really rocked the automotive world when they came out with these cars in 1957, transformed the fortunes of the company, and. Uh, provided a rude shock to General Motors and Ford. And the, it's, w- w- after this car, we'll see one where we'll see the GM reaction to it. Okay. Um, but that, that was a, a high point. These were designed under the auspices of Virgil Exner, who was then uh, chief designer at, at Chrysler. Uh, they, as I say, when these things came out, they stunned the industry. Uh, the advertising slogan was, suddenly it's 1960 for the 1957 models, and they were right. Well, suddenly it is uh, August here uh, in the state of Michigan, and the Dream Cruise uh, is on, uh, and we are ready to go uh, learn a little bit more uh, from Eric Gorgeous, who's with Sally O'Malley, the owner of the 1957 Dodge Cornet. Eric, over to you. What a fantastic Cornet. It is. This is awesome. I love the colors. I love the lines. This is a beautiful car. It is so much fun. I bet it is. What's your favorite part about it? Well, I grew up with a car like this. Oh yeah? My father had one, 
back in the 50s and 60s. Okay. And so it's it's special. Yeah, I bet it is. It I smells bet. like the old car. And my brothers, after my mom, you know, sold the other car, she kept this car. And my brothers would listen to the transistor radio, and we'd slide off the back with the <laughs> snow. But it, it's so much fun. You know, it's, it has a huge back seat for everyone to get in and out of. And how long have you owned it? This is my second dream cruise. Yeah, so it's relatively new for you. And I found it right where I live in Berkeley. Get out of here. What kind of condition was it in? Well, I shined it up and I got new tires and I got the back bumper re-chromed and I got brakes and I got more brakes and I got more brakes. <laughs> I love the lines. This is just a great car. It's pretty. And that grill, that grill is so unique it's and it's pretty. just beautiful. Thank you. What's your favorite part about this car? Listening to the oldies in it. Listening to the oldies? And singing along. And, and maybe that push button tranny? Oh, it's so cool. <laughs> and it? nobody can start it. If they steal it, they're not going to get it started. <laughs> That's great. Hey, thank you so much <laughs> for coming you. out. It it's was been great a meeting you. And have a great cruise. Oh, we are. All right. Thank you. All right, Fred. All right, Eric. Thank you. Uh, Bob Lutz, you're absolutely right about those uh, fins. And more than that, they just sort of lay down a marker in time that as you go on through history, you sort of, when you see those fins, which see more coming up, that's just sort of a, you punch in right to a certain yeah. era. Well, the interesting thing is the next car up is going to be a 59 Chevrolet, which came two years after this Dodge. Yeah. And this was a car that General Motors rushed into production because they were so stunned at what Chrysler had done with that one that we just saw. So this is the 59 Chevy that uh, has the, the low sweeping lines, the huge fins and everything. Uh, there's a story here that Bill Mitchell went in the studio and he kept saying, I want the horizontal fins. I want them, I want them to come out like airplane wings. And, or actually it was Harley Earl. And uh, this de the designers were scooping way more and more clay. And he finally took a trowel and he said, I'll show you what I want. And he <laughs> dug into the side of the clay model and uh, did these enormous wings out the side, which gave the manufacturing people a lot of headaches. So when you look sort of down the profile of the car, you can see it uh, kind of jutting out there. Uh, this is the, uh, uh, Martin Beneteau is the owner of the 1959 Chevrolet uh, Bel Air and certainly uh, the Harley Earl uh, influence. And if you look at that grill work, uh, Bob, that is just very broad and right there in your face. There's no mistake in that. Well, it, it was. Uh, it's a, a relatively simple texture, but it looks rich. And they they did something that you see some uh, you see quite often today, which is an upper air inlet, actually in the hood. Mm -hmm. uh, you you see that sort of double grill theme quite a quite bit quite a bit in modern cars. It was very unusual back then, but this was this was the first example of General Motors striking back at the cruel blow that Chrysler had given him in 57. Well, let's learn a little bit more. Uh, Martin Beneteau, uh, the owner of the 1959 Chevrolet uh, Bel Air with Eric Gorgeous. Eric, over to you. Man, this is another car I just love. I <laughs> love those horizontal fins. They just look so cool. Aren't they great? They are, <laughs> man, they are. And the twin antennas and everything. Oh, I yeah. mean, it's just fresh, you know? For sure, for sure. So tell yeah. me, how long have you had it? I bought it last year in April. Okay. Yeah, so oh. I've only owned it for about a year and a half. Yeah, but that's all right, but, man. That's all right. Yeah. Now, what kind of condition was it in? Very good condition. Yeah. Yes. I've, I've since done work to it okay. last winter. Had uh, some stuff done on the interior, had the motor and the transmission done and, and that sort of thing. Right on. So. Right on. Yeah. And what's your favorite part about the car? I mean, was this something that you really, really wanted and you sought after it? Oh, yeah. Or you just years, saw it and loved it? For years. For years? Yeah. I was born in 59. Oh, okay. okay. All right. Okay. So I had a connection with the car, right? Sure. Always loved it. It's the fins. Yeah. It's the back end that makes the car, right? It totally does. It dude. does. Totally. It's, it's almost so outrageous. It is. You know? It is completely outrageous. <laughs> that, but that's what draws your attention to it. You exactly. Know? I mean, the lines are beautiful, but those fins are just like overpowering. Exactly. That's great. Yeah. And uh, you take it out on the cruise last year or no? No. No. This is your first year out on first the cruise year. with yeah. you? Yeah. Yeah. First All year. All right. Yeah. You got to be looking forward to that. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah? Yeah. And tell me, do you own other cars or is this like nope. the one car you want? No. Nope. This is the only uh, vintage car that I've ever owned. Yeah? Yeah. You think you'll keep it? 
I'm hoping. This is a keeper. Yeah, for sure. Right on. Oh yeah, it took me it took me too long to find it. The the unique, How many years did it take you to find it? Oh, I was looking like three or four years. Okay. okay. So and the color is is unique for the fifty nine. This is Aztec copper. It's beautiful. Which was used in fifty seven. So the car was repainted, so beautiful. it was quite a plus for it. It looks, right. it looks beautiful in this color. It sure does, man. Hey, thank you for coming out. I thank really you. appreciate it. Yes. Have yes. a great night. Yeah, you too. All right, Fred. All right, thank you. That's the 59 Chevrolet uh, uh, Bel Air. Now, when we were uh, talking earlier during the setup, we talked a little bit about that grill, the upper area. That is an example, I guess, of uh, uh, both function uh, and form, taking something you need for cooling or other uh, engineering yeah, well, issues and making it look pretty. Some Sometimes it's about function and sometimes it's about... Uh, pure aesthetics. I, I have a hunch that on that car, it was pure aesthetics. But a, again, it's 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 a styling element that adds visual interest. Well, this is uh, our continuing live coverage of the Dream Cruise Roadshow here on Detroit Public TV and uh, DPTV.org. Fred Nahat alongside uh, Bob Lutz, Eric Gorgeous, talking to our car owners. Uh, and as we uh, take a good look at this one, this is... Um, uh, just another uh, beautiful example yeah, of... Yeah, 64, uh, 64 Stingray Coupe. This is uh, 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 Ruth Kalanecki, Aaron Kalanecki, the 64 uh, Corvette Coupe. Uh, tell us a little bit more about this one, Bob. Well, this was the second year of the so-called C2 Corvette, which was the second second generation Corvette, uh, with dramatic new styling done by Bill Mitchell, one of the most successful sports car styles of all time. It impacted the market for Chevrolet much the same way that the E-Type Jaguar did for Jaguar. Remember, we saw an E-Type earlier. Right. Uh, that was hugely successful. Some people would regret the fact that the one we're seeing is not the original split window coupe, uh, which are, you know, maybe more collectible. But this is a better car. It's got a better engine. Uh, the, the, the GM went from drum brakes to disc brakes. So to me, if you're going to own the car and drive it, this is the more desirable one. And uh, it looks from here to be a truly beautiful example with a great paint job. Well, let's uh, learn a little bit more about it. Uh, Eric Gorgeous uh, is with Aaron Kalanecki, uh, the owner of this beautiful, beautiful 64 Corvette. Eric, over to you. What a great vet, man. Thank you. Thank you very much. How long have you owned it? Uh, a few years. Yeah? Yep. How did you find it? Um, I had another one similar to this that I sold about five or six years ago, regretted it, started looking for another one. Yeah. And uh, just hours of internet searches and magazines and finally found the right car and bought it. Where did it come from? It came from St. Louis, uh, but originally it was out of the East Coast. Oh, okay. Isn't the internet a great thing today? Oh, it's fantastic. It makes you it so much easier find to find everything cars. that you need and yeah, it's really cool. Now, did you have to do a lot of work to it? Mechanically, I went through the car, basically. Yeah. Uh, it was restored before I bought it, but there was a lot of things that were not exactly right to make it 100% show quality. So I've kind of gone through. Uh, I didn't repaint it, but I redetailed the whole car. I rebuilt the motor, all the fuel injection equipment, and all that stuff just to get it right. Right on. I mean, the paint job on it is fantastic. Thanks. It's so deep. It's a yeah, nice it's, paint it's, job. I've got hours upon hours into polishing and waxing. <laughs> I so bet you do, man. Way too many hours. I bet it's you fun. do. And what's this car like driving? Um, It hugs the road pretty good, but yeah. our Michigan roads aren't all too favorable for these original style tires, but it does okay. Yeah. You keep it under 100 and it's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> keep it under 100. Right. <laughs> Have you you've said you've owned other vets? Uh, yeah, I, I had another 64 uh, similar to this. It was a different color, but okay. Uh, so I know my way around them. Yeah, yeah. Well, this is a great car, man. I really love it, and uh, I think you guys just did a great job with Thanks. it. Thanks. Appreciate know? it. Thank you so much for coming out, man. Both my of you, pleasure. I appreciate it. Thanks a lot. <laughs> All right, you guys you have guys. a great cruise. Thanks. You too. All right, Fred. All right, Eric, uh, thank you. Uh, Bob, just another uh, word or two on that uh, Stingray. First of all, some of these uh, cars come with this, uh, the reverse open hood, which uh, certainly the Corvette did. The reason for that are, are problems or issues? No, I, th I think it's just for convenience with hinging. Mm -hmm. A lot of times, um, cars with very low hoods, you have trouble locating uh, the latch mechanism, Then, so you put the latch mechanism in back, and then up front all you need is hinges. It's, you could also argue that there is a slight safety element in that 
if you forget to latch your hood, it's not going to blow open in the slipstream. Although, you know, frankly, I've never heard of anybody having an accident because the hood blew open. Well, well uh, the other thing about that Stingray is uh, you, me you mentioned the aluminum wheels, um, which was just another idea that getting back to original, doing it to original spec is something yeah. that uh, you have an idea for. Well, um, that car just looked absolutely perfect on its original wheels. You know, the proportion was right. And the value of the car will be much greater, much greater with uh, with everything original. But again, you know, the owner owns the car. He or she can do with it whatever they want. And that's right. fine. Continuing along on Dream Cruise Roadshow. Uh, and next up uh, is Jim Nagel, his 1955 Buick Super. Bob, a word or two about this one. Yeah, well, it's um, you know in the in the time honored Buick tradition where. Buicks were big, they had a lot of chrome, they had beautiful interiors, they were heavy, they gave you a cushy, silent ride as they glided down the road. The only thing that surprises me about this one, and I, I would actually like to ask uh, the owner afterwards, if Jim Nagel, if he's still around, um, you know, I'm surprised to see a Super with four portholes, because... Uh, my knowledge, or what I think is my knowledge, is that Supers had three portholes and only Roadmasters had four. So if this is a Super with four road with four portholes, then I'm kind of astonished and it means that I've learned something new. But I can tell from here it's a beautiful car and very original. Well, let's take a closer look. Eric Gorgeous uh, with Jim Nagel, the 1955 Buick Super. Eric, over to you. Hey, Jim, how you doing? Very good. How are you? I'm well, I'm well. And your name? Right. Paula. Paula, nice to meet you. Thank you both for bringing the car out. You're welcome. It's a great car. So tell us about the uh, ports. Well, Mr. Lutz was talking about how many portholes are in yeah. Buick in 1955. The Super, the Roadmaster, and the Century had four. Okay. That designated the bigger engine of the two that were available in 55. Ah, I got gotcha. you. This is a 322 nail head V8. All right. 236 horsepower. And those three cars had the bigger engine. I got you. So I got the four you. portholes meant the bigger engine. It's a beautiful car. I love the lines of it. I love, you know, all the curvature to it and the step lines and the highlights. It's really a nice car. How long have you owned it? Thirty years. Thirty years. Yes, sir. Wow. It's, and it's as old as I am, but in a lot better shape. <laughs> <laughs> right on. <laughs> have you gone through a couple restos on it, or? Nope. It had been painted once. Wow. And the interior has been replaced with the original patterns. Okay. But other than that, it's. It's the way it was rolling off the line. The engine's never been out of the car. Wow, man, this is in great shape. Do you drive it much? Not as much as I'd like. Yeah? Yeah. Right on. Now, do you own other vintage cars, or is this it? I've got a 66 Impala also. Oh, nice. Yep. That's really cool, man. And what's your favorite feature about this car? Portals. The portholes? <laughs> the four portholes? Everybody wants to talk about them. Really? Yep. yep. Yeah. It's really a classic design and it's really very unique thank you you know what else can you tell me about this well the fact that i've had it for 30 years both my kids have grown up with it so it's part of the family uh, it's pretty phenomenal man beautiful car you've taken you. great care of it thank i mean you. it's just a wonderful car it's got to be a hell of a cruising car oh love it right love on. it likes to go fast <laughs> <laughs> all right man all right. hey thanks for coming out thank you have a great night man take care all right fred all right, Eric, thank you. Uh, back alongside Bob Lutz. That was a beautiful 1955 uh, yeah. uh, Buick Super. Uh, moving to the next one, uh, 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 Bob, uh, from Clive Brown. It's another uh, Chevrolet Corvette uh, coming around the corner. It's, it's 1959. We've seen a couple thus far today in the program, but the 59 has its own unique styling. Uh, yeah, well, it, it's another one of the uh, dual headlight cars like we saw earlier. So it's basically... The C1 Corvette body, uh, as in the original, you know, 50, uh, 53, 54s, but with the later model wider grille, quad headlights, and little chrome surrounds. Uh, the rest of the bodywork is uh, purely Corvette as, as original. And this was getting towards the end of this body style. And then actually, the last two model years of Corvette off of this style had, weirdly enough, 
the Stingray back section with that sharp rear fender. The rest of the car was like this, but the rear fenders were already Stingray. This is still a very pure C, later, later stage C1 Corvette. Um, and uh, I, I think timelessly elegant, and it looks like the, uh, I can't tell the wheels from here, but uh, whatever it is, they, they look appropriate to the styling of the car. Well, yeah, it looks like a uh, sort of a, a clear uh, chrome hub. And of course, uh, the instrumentation, the styling, the, uh, the racing uh, steering wheel, all of that just uh, gives it that unique, unique look, even though, as you mentioned, uh, it was moving into uh, the transition. There's the, there's the wheels there. Well, I want to learn more about this one. Uh, incredible. Uh, Clive Brown, uh, the owner of the 59 Chevrolet Corvette with Eric Gorgeous. Eric, over to you. Hey, how you doing, man? Wonderful, wonderful. This is terrific. Thank you for doing it. Wow, this is awesome. And what a great car you've got here. Well, thank you very much. We had it a long time. Yeah, tell me about it. Well, uh, bought it in 1967, August of 1967. And uh, bought it for a hot rod. Paid $750 for it. No way, 750 bucks? <laughs> sure did, and the salesman I got it from was working at Matthew Argraves, he was ready to get rid of it. Oh so, my gosh. And I was ready to make a hot rod out of it, so that's what I did. Yeah? Yeah, and then uh, went in the military, uh, turned it in, I tore it all apart, turned it into a carcass, uh, got pushed out behind the garage, and then after I got out, uh, came back and just used it pretty much as a, uh, as a bench, a workbench, a, a test vehicle. And then in 1995, I decided to uh, get it together. So that's what I did. So I built a motor, painted it in the garage, uh, did all the work on it. And being the second owner, I have a lot of original parts on it. So they're right still on. there. Right on. And what kind of motor we got in there? This is a 350 with a crane cam. Uh, I kept it as a uh, period car. OK. So it's a, it's a 350. It's got enough horsepower in it that gets up and goes. It's and got a great sound got a holly, to it, too. Uh, thank you. It's got 1967 side pipes on it. Yeah, very and, nice. You know, I was working at Chevrolet at the time at the dealership, so they were easy to come by. <laughs> <laughs> right on, man. Hey, thanks for coming out. Well, I really you appreciate much. it. I appreciate great all you doing. Great car. Enjoy the cruise, buddy. All right. All right. OK, Fred. Much more to come on the Dream Cruise Roadshow here on Detroit Public TV and dptv.org. Much more coming up after this. Now, if you have an appreciation for the finer things in life, there's a good chance that you can probably appreciate the fine lines of some classic wheels. And when it comes to selling classic and collectible cars, the fellas at the Bay City Motor Company are the real deal. You know, I'm admittedly not much of a car guy, but you can't take my man card away because I like hockey. I'm going to go in here right now and try not to make too much of a fool of myself, so stick with me and no laughing. Walking into Bay City Motors is like taking a step back in time. Their showroom is like a mini museum of American motor history. And car guy or not, you can't help but enjoy the views. Heck, someday when I'm a lumber baron, I can totally see Jim driving me around the mitten in one of these babies. David Cotton's family has been part of the Michigan automotive scene for well over a century now. Now, if you're a car guy like me, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, uh, this is like a candy. This is a steering wheel. This is a candy. Okay. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> I got to write that down. This is like a candy store. Uh -huh. Now, what is this we're sitting in? This is, this is a 1932 Ford Model B Cabriolet. Ooh. And the Cabriolet means it's got the, the uh, soft top. Is dessert? The no. Oh. No. That's a custard. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thanks for the clarification. <laughs> um, now, what's your major function here? Is, is, is you guys, you sell to collectors? Our major function is we are literally a used car store. We're classic cars, right. pre-72 and high-end collector cars. But to somebody walking through the door, it is a candy store. We have some 21,000 people come through here a year. Really? We have many come back, go on a monthly basis to see what inventory has changed. We have youngsters come in with their cameras and, and it's fun seeing a preschooler admiring cars. And we have people who can barely move who walk or come in and they're remembering that car and that family and that time and so forth. So it's, uh, it's nostalgia, it's uh, enjoyment, it's design, it's creativity, it's performance. It's all of those to different people the way they grab it, but uh, that's what comprises the auto industry, just like the art industry. The cars here really are works of art, and as you can imagine, a ton of hard work goes into making them look as great as they do. 
and we met the guy responsible for doing it. Now this here's Ray Ray. He's so nice you get to say his name twice. How's that? <laughs> How's that for an <laughs> intro? Um, Dave, Dave just paid you the nicest compliment. He literally said that he would put you up against any other detail guy in the world, that he's actually bought cars because of the, what he knows you can do with them. Right. That must feel pretty good. It feels good inside, How, yes. long, how long have you been doing it? I've been cleaning cars for 23 years now. Yeah, but you don't yeah. just clean them, you actually take them, you bring them back to life. Bring them back to life, yes. And now what'd you do to your arm, is that from hard work? That's or? from hard work, that's hard work. <laughs> 23 years, right there you're looking at. Now tell me a little bit about this one you're doing here. Oh, this one here just came in, just came in. So I got it all shampooed inside, I got my motor done, I got my body. I run four coats of wax on them. That will make them so slippery. Did you teach yeah. my wife how to clean her car? <laughs> yes, they can all learn how to clean the car. Ray Ray, you have no idea what you just signed up for. And welcome in to the corner of Nine Mile and Woodward in Ferndale, Michigan, the site of the annual Woodward uh, Dream Cruise. And this is Dream Cruise Roadshow here on Detroit Public TV and worldwide at dptv.org. Uh, I'm Fred Nahat alongside our co-host uh, Bob Lutz providing the commentary for us. Appreciate you being with us. Good to be here. Eric Gorgeous joins us uh, as well on the street talking to the owners of these various uh, automobiles. Uh, speaking of which, let's get back to it, uh, uh, Robert. The next one up is a 1941 uh, Cadillac 6227 Coupe. Yeah. Uh, beautiful. Uh, yes, uh, it's in beautiful shape, obviously totally original. Um, which is always a joy to see. This was a, a business coupe, which was not one of the more popular body styles, but it was, you know, the base price Cadillac. Uh, back in 1941, uh, when the nation was basically started the war, uh, there was a 42 that came out, but not many of those were sold. But the 41 uh, really carried successful and wealthy people in the United States throughout the whole war. Throughout the whole war, and uh, back then. Since there were no German luxury makes, uh, no Lexus, and no Infinities, if you drove a Cadillac, you were at the top of the heap. And the uh, the 41 was a, a product of Harley Earl's Design Studios, and I think it epitomizes an era where every GM car was just a little bit more elegant and more perfect than the competition. Um, and this is the Cadillac, the, the 41 Cadillac kind of epitomizes that era. It's a beautiful car. Well, what, what also is so interesting is you go close in uh, on the wheel uh, cover, uh, the insignia, that Cadillac symbol is virtually the same as uh, you see it today. Well, I wish it were, but uh, designers like to change things, mm -hmm. and the, they recently got rid of the wreath of, from the wreath and crest, much to my dismay, but... Everybody at GM thinks it looks better this way, so I guess, you know, I guess it does. Yeah, well, actually, that's there's no wreath on that one. It's similar. So what's old is new again. It has it has evolved. Let's put it that way. Uh, well, listen, we are uh, looking at a virtual uh, evol uh, evolution of uh, automotive history here at Nine Mile and Woodward, and this the forty one Cadillac uh, Coupe. We're going to learn more about that. Here's uh, Philip Fisher uh, with Eric Gorgeous. Eric, over to you. Hey, how you doing, man? Yeah, very quite well, thank you. And your name? Helen. Helen, nice to meet nice you to both. Thank, thank you. you. Nice to meet you. What sir. a great car. Tell me about it. Well, we've owned it about three years. It's a 1941 Cadillac Coupe. Uh, they only made 1,985 of them in 1941. 1,985? Total production for the year. Are you sure year. about yeah, that number? Yeah, yeah positive. Right on the money. <laughs> <laughs> Powered by a 346 cubic inch flathead V8 engine. They use it in the M24 tank and the M5 tank during World War II. And then it proved itself quite well on the battlefield. So is this a car that you sought after, you had to have, or something you just saw and, and fell in love with? Saw it, fell in love with it, my internet purchase, and have been happy with it ever since. It's yeah, a great touring man. car. I'm telling you, the internet today, I was talking about that earlier, it makes it so much easier for car guys, you know, exactly. to find parts and find the car you want. Yep, absolutely. You know, it used to be you had to know somebody that knew somebody that knew somebody, and you know, exactly. whole bunch of phone calls, and next thing you knew, you'd find the car, you know? Now it's right at your fingertips, a matter of seconds. So, Fortunately for us, we were able to talk with the original owner and get a lot of history on the vehicle as well. Really? Yes. And so what kind of history do you give you on it? Well, came from North Carolina, and he'd had a large collection of cars, and this was amongst them, and he used it a lot for touring and driving around 
uh, when it's own, you know, when it's own, when you use it, because forty one KLX are very popular for touring cars because they're just they run so well. Oh, I so, gotta believe it's yeah. a pretty cush drive. It is, it is. Right, and I love the hood ornament on it, man. That's just awesome. They don't do stuff like that no, anymore. No, not any longer. It's like, yeah. But it gets stolen, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, that one is a latch, so I, they have to take the whole hood with it. <laughs> <laughs> right on, man. Hey, thank you both for thank coming you, out. Thank you so much. Eric. Wonderful Eric. car. Thank you. Thank I absolutely nice love it. Nice to meet you, Eric. Thank nice you. to meet you. Have a great evening, guys. Thank you. All right, Fred. Three in my book. All right, thank you, uh, Eric. We are coming to you live from the corner of Nine Mile and Woodward, the Dream Cruise Roadshow at Detroit Public TV, dptv.org, and antiquesroadshow.org, which is a thrill for us. So thank you, wherever you're watching, wherever this program is reaching you. Uh, a little bit of Motor City history as uh, we celebrate uh, all things uh, automotive, and I can't think of a better person to do that with uh, than Bob Lutz. Thanks so much for being here again. An original age-old automotive historical icon <laughs> well <laughs> and a virtual encyclopedia of everything uh, uh, design and engineering and marketing and all that history that's uh, terrific to have you here uh, as it is uh, the next vehicle that's pulling up uh, Bob yeah, in 1969 that's a beauty. Yeah. Z28 Camaro from uh, Aaron Kalanicki uh, uh, Ralph Kalanicki I think is going to uh, tell us about it but first let's hear from you well Z28s have always been special uh, they've always been an extremely high performance Camaro They've always benefited from special engineering effort. They were lightened. Uh, they got better brakes. They got better cooling. You could see the uh, f front spoiler on the car. So uh, Z28s to this day are um, treated with reverence and respect because this is one badge that General Motors has never dumbed down for marketing reasons. You know, let's. Everybody likes Z28. Let's put Z28 on a regular one and see if it sells better, which marketing guys will sometimes do. Sure. Uh, but the Z28 has been has been kept pure, and the whole engineering organization at GM will not put the Z28 label on a Camaro unless it is really special, and this car definitely was. Well, certified. I want to learn a little bit more about this. Uh, Eric Gorge is uh, waiting there uh, in Nine Mile to talk to, uh, well, maybe one of the owners. Uh, uh, Aaron Kalanicki's uh, Camaro, represented now by Ralph Kalanicki. Eric, take it away. Hey, what a nice car, man. Thank this you. thing is awesome. Thank you. So, which one of you own it? Um, I paid the bills, right. but he knows about it. You, so. And your name? <laughs> Ralph. Ralph, nice. This is a beautiful car. I saw your mom driving it, so I'm assuming you lost your license already? You uh -huh. look like a speed demon, man. Uh-huh. You did, didn't you? Uh-huh. On Woodward, you get popped? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you gotta lay off the pedal, man. Aww. <laughs> so, Ralph, tell me about the car. How long have you guys had it? Uh, 10 years. Since before I was born. Okay, so 10 years? 10 years, yep. All right. And what have you done to it? Have you guys done a lot to the car? It was in really good shape when we got it. And then he's been a part of a lot of the restoration and upkeep of it as little things have been needed to be replaced. So what's your favorite thing that you did with Dad? Um, what do you like to do? You like to do the brake jobs. Yeah. Yeah, you like <laughs> bleeding the brakes? Yeah. I got a job for you. You can come down to my <laughs> shop because I hate bleeding brakes. OK. Yeah, you can do that all day long, man. I'll keep you busy. Awesome. All right. Hey, what do you think about the car itself? You like the color? Yeah. Yeah, is it like your favorite? Uh, my favorite's blue. But so. green's close. Yeah. Right, right. All right. Well, hey, thank you both for coming out. Our really pleasure. appreciate it. Lay off the pedal, okay? <laughs> Maybe you'll get your license back. Aww. All right, thank you again. <laughs> thank you. Have Good a great night. Be safe. Thanks. All right, Fred. Thanks. All right, Eric, thank you. Uh, back alongside uh, Bob Lutz as we await the next classic car here at the Dream Cruise Roadshow. Talking about keeping your foot on the pedal, we were talking earlier about uh, this piece of automotive uh, lore that uh, engineers, executives uh, from the big three would bring their cars out here to Woodward, out to, Woodward yep. to make it on the test track. Any truth to that? Uh, it was used because back in those days, the emphasis was on like zero to 60 times or coming off of a traffic light and who, you know who would who would win to the next traffic light uh, the cars didn't handle particularly well they didn't stop particularly well but they went in a straight line awfully well uh, that's what the whole competition was about is who who can burn the most rubber off the line 
And as you know, most Detroit executives live in Bloomfield Hills or Birmingham, so Woodward Avenue was on the way home, and it was used uh, with no, you know, no official sanctioning, but a lot of people used it as a as a high performance track. It was the GM guys versus the Chrysler guys versus the Ford guys. Well, uh, whether they're uh, guys on the line, uh, engineers, executives, everybody uh, loves Woodward. Uh, speaking of which, coming up next is uh, Jan Stevenson, a 1948 Jeepster, Bob. Yes, this is actually this car was considered sort of a joke when it came out because what uh, American Motors, or I guess at that time it was the Kaiser Jeep Corporation, decided that people seem to be buying a lot of these little English sports cars with no windows where you had to put side curtains in and a fabric top. And the Jeep people said, well, we can do that. We can take the windows away. We can do a cheap fabric top. And they brought out the Jeepster with, you could, you could see the sort of cut out door line. And they actually thought that this car would compete with the likes of an MGTC midget uh, or other other British sports cars like Jaguar, and uh, I mean th they were they were practically laughed off the road. Didn't sell very well, and now they're to me now this car is ultra cool. I mean I'd 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 love to have one now, yeah. but back then I was with those who laughed at it. Well, let's uh, uh, let's hear from the person who has one, Jan Stevenson, uh, the 1948 uh, Jeepster with uh, Eric Gorgeous. Eric, over to you guys. Hey, what a cool car, man. This well, is really you. unique. Thank you. Tell me about it. How long have you had it? It's been in my family for 60 years. 60? Yeah, yeah. Wow. I was born one year before it was manufactured. Holy 1948. smokes. 1948. That's some serious history with yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. My father bought it in 1955. He was the Maytag man, and he traded a Maytag washer and dryer for it. Oh, my gosh. How cool is that? <laughs> yeah. That is great. <laughs> <laughs> so have you guys had to restore it? Yeah, over the years, I've bits and pieced it a little bit at a time. Yeah, a little bit here and there? Yeah. yeah. Is it mostly original, though? Oh, yeah. 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 All the Everything on it is original, just re-chromed and repainted. Right on. Yeah. Right on. And the color is pretty original? The color is absolutely original. The top was originally black on all of them, but oh, I like the saddle top. And it looks really nice. The interiors were always gray from the factory, but I like the saddle interior. So, I think that was a good call. It's not going out of my garage anytime soon, so it's yeah, right. whatever I like. Keep it in the family, right? Yes. Yeah, I think you made a really good call with changing the color of the Thank interior you. and the top Thank because you. that contrast really pops. Thank you, yeah. You know, Thank I think you. A, a lot better than a black wood. Yeah. In my opinion. Yeah, yeah it, it's, it's been, uh, for when I was in my teens, I didn't like it. Right. And I was kind of rough on it growing up. Right. Well, because I think I wanted every a, teen was. I wanted a fast car. <laughs> <laughs> this is not a fast car. Right on. And so I was kind of rough on it. And then my father got back at me and gave it to me on my 40th birthday. Well, hey. And that's my business, restoring cars. So that's he awesome. knew I was going to do it. All right. Got hey, it. man. Thanks for coming out. Thank you. Really appreciate it. It's been a wonderful day. Love your car, man. Enjoy the cruise. All right, Fred. All right, Eric. Uh, thank you. Earlier today, as Bob Lutz arrived here uh, at Nine Mile and Woodward, he rolled up uh, in his Destino, which is his latest project uh, automotive-wise. Uh, let's take a look. Hey, Bob, great to see you again, Eric. Man. Good to see you. How's things going? Uh, not bad. Yeah. So what do we got here? We've got the VLF Destino, the second one on the road, made in Auburn Hills. The Destino, and it's made in Auburn Hills. Made in Auburn Hills. The body is uh, what used to be a Fisker Karma hybrid. And what my partners and I do is we take out all the electricals and we fit a Corvette ZR1 640 horsepower engine with a six-speed automatic with paddle shifters. Get so it, out of here. So it's basically the, the only American four-door supercar. Yeah. This is awesome, and I love the fact that you pull out all the electrics and jam <laughs> yeah. in some American yeah, like muscle. Like in the old days, yeah. Can we that's, check under the hood, man? That's what it is. It's modern American muscle. Oh, this is awesome. Well, as you can see. Oh, look at that. Corvette ZR1 was a tight fit, but it fit beautifully. You know, we had 
like about a half an inch to spare there, yeah, one inch did. to spare. But <laughs> we got it all in. Shoehorned so. it in, man. That's awesome. Look at that. I love seeing that. How does it sound? Well, we could start it up. I if think we like should. All right. I almost think we have to. All right, good. Yeah, it sounds especially good out the back. Just a minute. This looks beautiful, Bob. This is awesome. Oops. Oh, that's nice. And this looks like it could be a daily rider. Absolutely. I mean, it's a it's very comfortable. It glides down the road. It's got a very, com despite the 22 inch wheels and the very narrow tires, yeah. with uh, low tires, it's got a very compliant ride. So, this is great. Really, really solid, man. Thanks so much for bringing it out. Well, you're quite welcome, Eric. I'm good excited to, to, good to see to the rest here. of the cars. OK, thanks. Well, Bob Lutch, you've done about uh, everything there is to do uh, automotive-wise. Uh, but like the Godfather, uh, if you try to get out, they just keep pulling you back in. The Destino, that's something that you're actively involved in right here in the Metro Detroit area. Yeah, uh, we're, we're assembling them in uh, Auburn Hills. And uh, as I, th I think I told you earlier, we start with um, we start with Fisker Karmas, which are battery-operated hybrids with a small four-cylinder engine. And uh, the, they weren't very reliable, and they had battery problems, and there's a lot of owners that have and don't know what to do with them. Mm -hmm. And uh, we can help them out because... We will take their Fisker Karma, pull out all the electrical stuff, pull out the four-cylinder engine, and replace it all with the Chevy Corvette ZR1 drivetrain, and they have an American supercar. Well, and how, are we likely to see one on the road? Uh, oh, I very much hope so. I mean, right now there's only a handful. There's mine, uh, Carlos Santana's, one in California. But uh, we're fully certified, and there's nothing keeping us from going in production. Well, thanks for sharing it with us, uh, Bob Lutz and the Destino. All right, next up, uh, Robert, a 1965 Buick Riviera Gino Vitelli. Uh, we get a good look from where we're sitting right here. Yeah, and uh, it's pretty dramatic looking because it's in the um, Latino lowrider tr tradition. It's got just this one, this particular one has been modified to have a... Uh, variable height suspension and I could see the owner just let it settle down on the ground which uh, makes it basically undrivable in that but it looks cool uh, this this was a particularly nice body style this uh, this is the second modification of the first generation Riviera which many people say was one of the most beautiful American cars ever designed a tremendous collector items and uh, note, for instance, the interesting headlights, which open and close in a clamshell, those uh, those chrome covers. So a, a very interesting car. Uh, personally, you know, you know me, I would have left it stock, but right. I'm, sure the, I'm sure the owner likes it the way he did it. Well, and those just uh, uh, open, open up. Uh, it's just like a regular uh, pole instrument panel, and those things crank open and the lights go on. Yeah. Well, let's learn a little bit more about this. This is uh, a beautiful beautiful piece of uh, automotive art. Uh, Gino Vitelli, the 65 Buick Riviera with Eric Gorgeous in the middle of Nine Mile. Eric, over to you. Hey, Gino, how you doing, man? Good, Eric, how you doing? I'm all right. This has to be one of the coolest Rivieras I've seen. Well, gee, thank you, I appreciate that. Oh, I love it. I love the air and the wheels, the whole deal, man. This is just <laughs> awesome. Thank you. How long have you had it? I got it for the uh, last 10 years now. Yeah? And uh, I picked it up right here out of Michigan. Basically, it was uh, found. And we were look I was looking for one for quite a long time, for three, four years. And uh, I even traveled to Arizona looking around while I was really? out there. Couldn't find nothing that was neat. And sure enough, here it is right around the corner at home. Yeah, that's how things usually work out, usually, right? Usually, yes. So were you looking specifically for a RIV? Yes, I was. Yeah? yeah. What, what about it do you like? Well, it's a piece of art to What's begin with. What's not to like, right? Exactly. Like everything uh, about it, it's got style, uh, some finesse, yeah, some muscle too, as yeah. well. You know, it's all blended in all together. This thing just is—it's just a classy car. 
You know, it's a classy looking car. And the way you did it, man, spot on. Oh, I love thank it. Thank you. Thank I you. I dig the interior, the whole deal. And this is pretty well loaded out in the interior. Yes, it is. It's a fully loaded car, windows and air and uh, tilt. And the original uh, interior as well as the car is original other than a paint job. And I did the air system and a set of wheels on it. Yeah. But other than that, it's an original car. It's well, well looked after. Was it in pretty bad shape when you got it or not too bad? No, no. Uh, it was all solid. I just needed a paint job, basically. Okay. And uh, as you see it, that's it is. That's the way it is, all original, for the, unless it's the paint. Now, is this a car you're driving every day or pretty often or not so much? Any day I can do it. <laughs> Any day you can do it, yeah? Rain or shine or just shine? Well, no. I, I've been caught in the rain a lot of times, yeah, right. but I take my chances. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's the way to own a car. Well, if you ask right. me, you got a cool car, you ride it, man. You drive it, you enjoy it, you that's have fun right. with it. Exactly. You know? You live once. Yeah, sitting and looking at it. I don't know, it gets old after a while. Well, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Hey, this is really a great car. I really dig it. Thank What's you, your Eric. favorite feature on the car? Clamshell headlights. The clamshell headlights. Yes. That's pretty unique, right? Well, it's the one year that they had it only because it's a three-year uh, body style for it. Yeah. And this was the last year that they made the clamshells for it. Right on. Yeah. All right. Well, hey, man, thanks so much for coming thanks, out. Thanks, Eric. Appreciate it was great it. meeting you, and I love your Same car. Here. Thank you. All right, buddy, have a good night. You too. All right, Fred. All right, Eric, thank you. Back alongside uh, Bob Lutz. Uh, things are heating up at the corner of Nine Mile and Woodward. Uh, Dream Cruise uh, here on Detroit Public TV and uh, worldwide at dptv.org and antiquesroadshow.org. Uh, uh, this has been a, a great experience being able to just, uh, Bob, see all the different kinds of cars, but also the different ways in which owners uh, uh, go about restoration. Yeah, it's, and it's, it's interesting. It's a totally different philosophy. Some people want the car to be their individual work of art, and they'll modify it or do what what is called a resto mod, which is a restored old car but modified mm -hmm. uh, we just saw an example of that and that's that's actually become a category now so-called resto mods and um, uh, you could it's, it's interesting that you can tell that Eric is very much in favor of that because he makes his living modifying vehicles and doing and I'm more a traditionalist um, and uh, I like to see the car as the factory made it you can add tasteful refinements, but I don't like putting modern wheels on an old car, for instance. It's just a, a phobia of mine. And yet, a lot of owners like that. So why shouldn't they do it? Well, even as we go along, I mean, in real time, no matter the era, there was always a certain aftermarket that people made a living yeah, off absolutely. of. absolutely. You know, there were some designers yeah. and, and those kinds of things. And sometimes we forget the fact that add-ons were always there. And the, the, the automotive designers hated him. I remember Harley Earl, uh, no, uh, Bill Mitchell telling me once with the original Olds Toronado, he said, I finally designed a car that those damn marketing people can't put a vinyl roof on. <laughs> and he drove home after the car was introduced, drove by an Oldsmobile dealer, and there was one in the, in the show window with a dealer-installed vinyl roof. So... Well, aftermarket, I mean, it was always such a, yeah. such a big part of it, whether it was pinstripes sure. or, uh, you know, mag wheels or whatever it is. All right, well, uh, next up, Michael Watson, the owner of the 1962 Ford Galaxy, beautiful red. Looks like this is very close to uh, original specs, Bob. It, it is, and um, you can see uh, to what extent uh, this car was influenced by the successful Chevrolets. Uh, in that if you if you look at the grill, the headlight placement, the shape of the hood, uh, the whole uh, volume of the body panels and so forth, you can tell that this car was heavily influenced by the 59 and 60 Chevrolet. Uh, but a, a very beautiful car, maybe lacking a, a little bit in specific Ford character, but very, very good. All right, let's send it over to Eric with Michael Watson, the 62 Galaxy. Guys, over to you. Got it. Hey man, this is a great car. Thanks Eric, appreciate it. How long have you had it? We've had it for about three years now. Yeah, what did you do to it? We haven't done a lot. We actually found it up north. It's a, a barn kept car. 
Another barn car. Yeah. All yeah. night long, man. Yeah, just outside of Grayling, up in Northeast Lower Peninsula. Right on. Driving down the road on vacation, saw it on the side of the road and met with the owner. He kept it in the barn for over 40 years. He's the second owner. He bought it from his brother-in-law who bought it brand Holy new. Holy yeah. smokes. You take it out to the cruise often? We do. We love it. Right? Yeah. Yeah, what's not to love about it? Hey, man, this car is awesome. I love the Galaxy, man. Thank you. Thank you so appreciate much for it. coming out. We appreciate it. Thank you, man. All right, Fred. All right, Eric, uh, thank you. Uh, as uh, we close now, we want to uh, say thank you to all of the folks who supported this uh, program uh, financially, to our funders, uh, and, of course, uh, to Eric Gorgeous and uh, Bob Lutz, to the crew here at Detroit Public Television, putting this all uh, together. Uh, Bob, I want to thank you personally for being involved in this. Uh, so many uh, people said, if Bob's in, I'm in, too. So thanks great so much. great fun. Thanks very much, Appreciate Fred. Appreciate it. And thank you for being with us, the Dream Cruise Roadshow, only here on Public TV. Dream Cruise Roadshow is brought to you by Plymouth Oral and Facial Surgery, Drs. David Sturtz, Norman Betts, Jeffrey Wazalewski, Chad Betts, and Matthew Pinsky, with offices in Plymouth, Ann Arbor, Chelsea, and Ypsilanti. And by Lloyd and Morsine Royce, RF Connect, Leonard A. Kurshevsky, Neil Zelenko, Marjorie and Maxwell Jospi Foundation, Hanan Lease, and Sandy and Jim Danto.